Hello and welcome to the official non-esports YouTube channel. I am Kadoink and today we have in the bottom right, bottom left, excuse me, of Entombed Valley, the blue Terran player Non-Ligus. And his opponent in the bottom right of Entombed Valley is the red Protoss player uh, Geel. So this is a TVP on Entombed Valley sent by Legus, our non-esports player. Very exciting to uh, very excited to be casting a Legus game. Just got done casting a game from the dude. Uh, very exciting TVT. Um, I'm casting a bunch of games in a row because I am going to be traveling a lot in the months of December and January, as I will be uh, on Christmas break from from university. So. Because I'm traveling a lot, I won't really have my setup uh, and stuff like that. I won't have my mic. So I thought I would just cast some games uh, in the first few days of my break, and then I would have a good good deal of games to upload as time goes on. Might be able to cast some games towards the middle of January, but the beginning of December will be really tight, so I'm at least going to get three or four games casted uh, if possible. So very excited to be casting this game, as I said. Um, I think for the most part I have uh, reduced the frame rate problem as much as possible. Uh, so now I have good audio quality and decent, uh, excuse me, decent, um, decent frame rate quality. So hopefully I can keep that up and still looking to get a new computer in the future um, so that I can really be streaming at super, super high quality. So. Looks like the usual thing is going down. Uh, nothing too, too interesting. Legus, of course, walling off. This is something every Terran player does. It's really, really good. If you don't wall off, do it. Just do it. It doesn't cost anything, and it can prevent a lot of annoying things. Uh, a lot of annoying early rushes and, and things like that. So, yeah, build it. Looks like this was on the NA ladder, uh, excuse me, the EU ladder, as non-esports is a German team. Um, I say that because they are in these spawn positions, which you don't really see in tournaments. A lot of players complain about it. I don't really know how I feel about it. It's kind of weird. It's because the two players can contest the space. And it just uh, it makes for better symmetry if one of the players is up here or uh, one of the players is up here. But it's no matter. It doesn't really make too big of a difference, um, I believe, in this matchup. But who knows, uh, it's just a really quick reinforcing time and stuff like that, so a lot of two base all-ins are a little bit easier, things like that. Legus is of course building his command center on the low ground, so then one Rax expands. Most usual build in the world, I do it every single game, it's such a great build. And uh, Jeel is doing the usual thing as well, looks like he's getting up um, two gateways and his... Uh, Cybernax core, usually we see one gate expand, stuff like that, um, but sometimes we see multiple gateways into an early rush or uh, anything along those lines. Anything is very, very possible. We have a probe up here building a pylon. This is kind of an odd place to build a pylon. It's kind of far away, um, but I guess it could scout for drops. Whoa, we got a Twilight Council going down. Looks like we're going to have a hidden dark shrine being placed down. That's kind of the only reason you'd really hide a Twilight Council. I guess you could hide High Templar, but it's not really a reason to hide them. They're just, I don't know, they're just good. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to see a Dark Shrine come out. Uh, we also have the Robo facility coming out as well as another gateway. So it looks like three gate Robo with a hidden Dark Shrine to try to do some damage. So how is Le Legus going to be able to deal with this? Well, Fortunately, he will have two orbital commands, and if uh, Jill strikes at a very, very poor time, he's just going to scan, kill the DTs, build turrets, stuff like that. Super, super easy. Uh, the other thing is a lot of players will just build a turret naturally or instinctively. Um, so we'll see if Legus decides to do that or not. He does not have an engineering bay at this time. Uh, but that's something a lot of Terran players get very quickly. Legus went for the three racks getting the tech lab and then he's going to start stem or combat shield depending on what he's comfortable with and what he likes looks like it is going to be stem so this is the exact build I do every single game uh, against Protoss and it's it's a very good build so if you guys want to copy it do so you can you can win a lot of games like it um, 
And then yes, of course, he's going for the factory. Once the factory finishes, he will be getting the reactor, as well as a starport. I imagine he's going to be taking a third gas very shortly, and then he'll put down his engineering base somewhere. Uh, but will he have it in enough time? It looks like we have a dark shrine just halfway done, and he is getting the, uh, the warp prism, so... Looks like it is going to be DT drops. Uh, Legus actually very, very wisely has some Marines over on the right to make sure he can deal with any kind of uh, Warp Prism play, so that's very, very smart. Warp Prism play not too, too common, but when it happens, it's very deadly. So yeah, even adding some more. Uh, this Warp Prism was, of course, not seen, but uh, it will be shut down. So what he's going to do is he's going to warp in some DTs, put them into here, and then he's going to fly over and try to drop them. And Legus will be able to deny that. Looks like, uh, is there an engineering bay yet on the field? It looks like no. So no turrets quite yet. He does have enough energy for scan. Actually just burned it on a mule. And here, uh, about halfway to a mule. So three DTs in this warp prism. It is going to be flying and shut down very, very promptly. In fact, he sees those marines and he will be, uh, will be moving back. And he's doing this while taking expansion. So this is very, very smart. He is going to try to drop here. Um, a lot of damage being taken on that Warp Prism. In fact, the Warp Prism is going to go down before, well, three of them were able to go down. Is there a scan? Not on this base, but maybe on another one. It looks like he needs to run his SCVs, which he will indeed be doing. I imagine we'll see an Engineering Bay go down very, very shortly. Uh, and he's keeping this, uh, keeping this lifted so that the DTs can't escape. Very, very smart. So he's going to be moving his SCVs up. Does a scan, going to try to get a surround, but it looks like the DTs are going to run away, so... Probably should have waited a little bit on that scan. He is able to see one of the DTs and pick him off. A second one getting low on health. And now there are only two DTs. Uh, looks like he's going to be running down where a turret has been built. He did finish that engineering bay. And those DTs will die very, very quickly if they go down that ramp. So this is one of the more obnoxious plays you can see from Protoss players. Does he have another scan yet? If he lands this, he will. He's just going to be lifting up his building so that they can't be destroyed. Uh, Spidey Eagles, of course, will be destroyed, and oh man, this engineering bay looks like it's going to go down as well before plus one gets finished, so this is super, super annoying for Legus to deal with. Uh, had he had two scans up instead of one, he might have been, might have been able to deal with this a little bit better. Um, and it looks like he is going to use the scan. Oh, maybe not. No, uh, just going to... Yeah, he is going to scan, try to pick this off, do some stimming, but DTs are super fast and able to get away. He does not have another scan, so he's going to need to continue to build supply depots as they get picked off, which we can see he is doing. So, sure enough, he's going to be able to kill these uh, kill these Dark Templar eventually. Good lord, Dark Templar do so much damage. And he's just going to take this base over here. So, what do we have going on? We have, in the income tab, it looks like Still pretty even thanks to mules. Jill is, a, of course, uh, two to three hundred minerals ahead because he does have this second nexus. So very, very healthy economy for Jill. While uh, non legus is just kind of supporting himself on on mules and a ton of SCVs. He's, of course, starting to mine at his third instead of his main. Uh, but the thing I'm really concerned about is Jill's going for the robotics facility, or robotics bay. He's going for Colossus. Getting that thermal lance, making some uh, some zealot, so probably a zealot zealot high temp. Uh, excuse me, zealot colossi. There's some sirens going on in the background. I don't know if you can hear them. Ooh, these DTs trying to escape. Looks like these rocks are going to keep them from going anywhere. Scan going down, so he can finally pick off the remaining two dark templar. And now Legus will be fine. Could probably re-expand to his main if he'd like, and then also uh, continue to mine at this third. He's going to be destroying these destructible rocks. And he's just going to rebuild his infrastructure. He's going to put another reactor on this starport. Going to be building up another tech lab to get some uh, some more upgrades. Probably that combat shield's next. And he's going to continue to build SCVs. So, uh, will he have the correct read? Will he know that, that Colossi are going to be on the field? There are currently none, I don't think. Oh, there's one on the field. I don't quite know where he is. Uh, there he is. Just hiding over here by the, mat, the ramp. I, I thought I looked there, but... Uh, guess not. Two engineering bays going down. He's going to be getting that plus one upgrades. And, of course, he's re-expanding to his main. And just, boom. 
building a ton of barracks, another starport to make up for lost time, uh, as well as another reactor, so he can pump out four Vikings or four medevacs at a time, whatever he wants. It's a little bit low on gas, so I would like to see him... Uh, yeah, he is going to be taking his gas at his third, very, very smart. And then I suppose he'll probably be taking his gas back in his main, and he'll be able to produce a lot of units. So, his so money is a bit high, which is actually good in this situation, because um, that means his production can continue to boom. In normal situations, you, want, you would want that low, but in a case where you've been heavily, heavily pressured and you have to rebuild very, very quickly, it's a good thing, so... Looks like Jill is moving across the map. Uh, it does seem that Legus knows about it. Maybe he did a scan over in Jill's base. Yeah, it looks like he did. Uh, and he saw that robotics bay. So he knows for sure that there are Colossi. And so he has started his Viking production. Currently has one. Uh, two more on the... Actually, three more on the way. And they will pop out. He really needs to put his guys in his bunker. Um, actually, unless Jill just kind of goes up in the third, this could be very, very risky for Legus. Uh, Stalker going up, just scouting, seeing exactly what's going on. And Jill, for some reason, okay, he's going to be going for it. He's going to be moving up the ramp. I don't know if Legus can hold on to this base. He's lifting it up, and he should just run it away, uh, which is a smart move. A lot of SCVs are going to go down, of course, to the Colossi and Zealots. Uh, these engineering bays... I don't really like them in your third or even in your naturals. It's very vulnerable, and this orbital command is going to get picked off. So, a little bit of a bummer for Legus losing that. He is now on one base again as this... Oh, no, this has finished, so... He's on 1.5 bases, really working on getting that, getting his main back up. And Jill's going to be very happy with that. He's just going to go through and continue to pressure, but a lot of Vikings swooping around, and they are going to be able to pick off one of the Colossi fairly quickly if these stalkers get out of the way but the stalkers doing so much damage getting in the bunkers is very very smart actually a pretty good position for legus he's sending the vikings around to try to do some damage to the colossi the colossi are getting very very low one of them going down the second one uh is going to take some shots off the well and it is going to go down as it was targeted and now there are only stalkers left and a lot of marines and they are going to force the stalkers back so legus holding that very very effectively uh Geo is trying to reinforce with another Colossi as well as some more Zealots. But I think at this point his attack is kind of up. I think he should take a third and just continue to macro. I don't like this repressuring against this bunker. Uh, another Viking on the field. Some Marauders. More Marauders than he had before, I believe. So I don't know if this is going to do a lot. We can see the army supply is in Geo's favor. He is actually sitting at uh, 56 to the 54 of non-Legus, so not even up that far in army supply. He's ahead in probes, of course, but um, I think he should just take a third base, but he is going to be going for it, moving up the ramp, keeping the Zealots at front, uh, the Stalkers in the back, the Vikings moving forward to try to do some damage to the Colossus, uh, but it looks like... Legus is actually in a better position here. This Colossus is going to go down, and now they're once again only going to be Stalkers, a lot of Marines, as well as the Bunker, and so he is going to be running forward and trying to pick off as many of these SCVs, as he, uh, excuse me, Stalkers as he can, but uh, knowing that the warping of Zealots is going to be huge trouble, he is going to be running back and building another Bunker. So, wise choice from Legus. The one problem Legus has is these attacks keep coming, and Jill's going to be at 1-1 very, very soon with... Salt legs. He's also finally taking his third, which I think he should have started a little bit back. And Legus is only going to be on two base with 0 0 to the three base 1 1 of Geo. So some really good positioning is going to have to go on for Legus. Um, and he's going to have to do as much damage as he can. He scan saw the small army supply of Geo. Uh, does just now see that Colossus, so I think that's going to stop him for a bit. And so he's going to be moving forward. The uh, Vikings are going to take some great shots off on, off on that Colossi. The Zealot's in a bad position, stimming forward, killing off as many of these as he can. And actually, Legus, for the first time, is in a very, very commanding position. He's picking off as many of these Stalkers as he can. The Colossus looks like it is indeed going to go down, and now there's not that much left for Jill. So, Legus is just going to go for it. He's going to continue moving forward, attacking as much as he can. What is there in the way of defense? Nothing in Jill's base, except for four Stalkers and two Zealots. So, this pylon going down, and Legus is just going to run straight up that ramp, kill the army before the Colossus even pops. He sees nothing. Go, Legus, go. He's being a little bit apprehensive. It might be smart. Uh, 
actually waiting for some reinforcements, which I think is actually a good idea. Uh, Colossus did finally pop their R2 Vikings on the field. Vikings going to do as much damage as they can. The Marines and Marauders trying to pick up the Colossus. It goes down very, very quickly, and now the Zealots are absolutely melting. Stalkers are all that is left. Probes are even coming in as some Zealots warp in to try to deal with this, and it looks like uh, he has enough to scare Ligas off, but just until he gets reinforcements, a lot of units going down at this time. We can see an NC from Ligas. Not sure what that means, but the Zealots... Uh, going down the probe surrounding, and it looks like Ligas is going to take this game handily, and Geo leaves the game without a GG. Wow, Ligas taking advantage of the fact that uh, Geo kind of let off the pressure, and he just went straight for that army, killed that Colossus, and just pushed hard. So, great, great play from Ligas, taking that opportunity as quickly as he could. Uh, otherwise, I think he would have been in trouble because the snowball effect was starting to happen for Geo. He was getting his third, he was getting those upgrades, and he could have just snowballed and then, boom, crushed Ligas. But Ligas saw that one moment of hope, and he just took it. So some fantastic play by Ligas, holding off that Dark Templar attack and uh, then continuing on to win this game. So, wow, thank you so much for sending me this game. It was very, very exciting. I enjoyed casting it quite a bit. If you enjoyed this cast, please comment below, like the video, and of course subscribe to the non-esports YouTube channel. That helps us out quite a bit. Uh, also check out our website. All the links will be in the description bar. And finally, you can send on replays to kadoinkreplays at gmail.com. Hope you enjoyed this cast. Excited to cast another, and I'll see you guys next week.